Hey everybody, what is up? Gary Simon here. So today we are going to be hopping into Figma in the world of UI design and we're going to design a mobile app from scratch and it's going to have a light mode and a dark mode along with an interactive prototype with the help of the new Figma variants uh, as a toggle switch. So let's go ahead and check out what exactly I'm talking about. So if we click this little button here, we can see it toggles between both light and dark mode. And this isn't, ju this isn't just a technical tutorial to show you how, but we'll also be talking about I, uh, you know, the color theory and, and how we're going to achieve the difference here from light and dark mode. So as you can see, we have the, uh, the variant right here. We're gonna create that from scratch and everything else you see here essentially. All right, so as always, make sure to subscribe and check out designcourse.com. In fact, let's talk about that right now. Now, releasing in 24 days from the upload date of this video is designcourse.com. So that is January 4th of 2022. Now, if that date hasn't yet arrived, make sure to enter your email right here to be notified when it releases. And what is it? It's basically the most comprehensive approach to learning UI design available on the internet. And I've been working on this for a year and a half along with a, a small team. Everything is custom that we've created. Uh, it's not just video, it's also user interface tests. And if you're interested to see exactly what that is, click the play now button. There's dozens of these UI tests to help develop your eye. And it's also mentorship. And so what that, what that means is there's about 15 different challenges and you submit a Figma prototype to me and then I take a look at it and I provide revisions and I show you your weak spots so that you can grow with actual feedback from myself, a skilled UI designer of over two decades. And this is going to help any aspiring UI designer to simply grow tremendously. So definitely check out designcourse.com and let's get started. All right, welcome to this new video lesson where we're going to create a mobile UI from scratch and then also make it uh, a light version initially with a toggle switch that will prototype and animate and when they click on it, it'll transition to a dark mode version of that layout. Now, you might wonder why uh, would you have a dark mode and light note mode? Well, essentially when people are using uh, your app or your website on their phone, uh, sometimes they prefer to have a dark mode version um, for multiple reasons. Uh, one is it can save battery power because a lighter screen is going to consume much more battery power uh, than one that's dark. And then also due to eye strain, some people just don't like to have that really bright layout glaring in their eyes. So I'm gonna show you how to first create the light version and then how to create the dark version. So we'll be talking about colors and such and um, different use cases. So let's go ahead and get started by clicking on the frame tool and we're going to use a phone, iPhone 13 Pro Max. Any of them is going to work for this essentially. And this is going to be our light version. So uh, for our base color here, we're just gonna leave it at white. And let's just put in Gary Simon, you could put your own name if you wish. Um, and then we're gonna leave it, we're gonna specify Nunito, N-U-N-I-T-O. Uh, and maybe we'll make this, maybe not that large, that's quite large. We'll do 18 or so. And then we'll make font weight bold. And let's get a grid out real quickly. So we're gonna change this to four, oops, sorry, four columns rather. Um, We'll just make this darker, 5%. And we'll do a margin of about, uh, let's do 30. All right. So we have our name up here. Let's get a primary color for our color scheme. Somewhere right around there, I think looks good. And then we'll right click, we'll go to Iconify. We'll click on, or we'll search rather, Menu. And let's use this one right here and get this situated and get it larger. You definitely don't want your icons uh, or anything that's on mobile that a pe person has to tap. You don't want them to be too small and too difficult for people to click on. All right, so that's looking pretty good right there. We'll go ahead, sh control shift four, we'll hide those the grid rather and let's do kind of like a card right here 
So I'll drag out, we'll make sure we're using our alignment so that everything is evened up. And let's use our primary color here. And yeah, right there, I really like that, the look of this. We'll do eight or so. And I have an illustration uh, that was uh, I got from the Figma community. I'm just gonna paste this in just like this. And what if we wanted to watermark it just here and we don't want anything to, to show up after. So what we can do is we can duplicate this rectangle too behind it, add it to the top, select both of those layers right there, and then click on the mask. So what that will do is we can come out here now with our mask group and we can see it says selection colors we can come down and just make it a little bit darker. And look at that, or you can go lighter, it's up to you. So I'm choosing just to go um, darker and that is completely fine. Um, let's also go ahead and I'm going to copy and paste in some type right here that I had off screen. Just says, congratulations, you've logged in 10, logged in 10 consecutive times in a row. Um, we can also go to Econify really quickly. We'll do uh, close. We'll get our close button here. So I think we'll use this one. Maybe this is some sort of just little panel that they can click out of, like a, a kind of like a news notification or alert thing. And again, you want to mind your fundamentals, get things lined up cor correctly and appropriately. All right, so that looks pretty good. I kind of don't like that. Let's, there we go. A little bit less letting there. All right, that looks good. Uh, let's continue on just creating this fictional UI. Let's say for instance, we wanna, oh, let's go ahead and let's take this whole section. We'll make a group out of it and we will lock it. That way we don't, we don't select it by accident. So let's have like a little activity feed down here. So we'll have a label for it specifically. Um, one thing we can do just to help ourselves is just replicate that, drag it down, holding shift. We'll put in new activity. And let's make this, as you can see, if we left it at this color, it seems like we're using this color a little bit too much. You don't really wanna overuse your primary color, so let's just make this black. And then additionally, we might want a two column approach where we only are listing out a few of the activity items, whatever those may be, but giving them a way to see all activity would be nice as well, so see all activity. So. One problem here, if we left it just like this, what is the problem here? Well, the issue is, is first it's a lack of visual hierarchy between these two typographic elements. And second of all, this is a label. It's not something you click, it's just a label to inform the user. Um, and so it is styled as such. However, this is an actual button. It's meant to be something people can click on. So you have to do, you can do that through several, several ways and, and you know, make that obvious to the user. Leaving it like this would not be the right approach. So what we wanna do is we can um, style it differently. So maybe, so now you can see we clearly established a good visual hierarchy just between these two elements already, but we can also change other elements for instance, we can change the size, maybe to 16, and then also we can underline it. So you don't always have to create pill-shaped button containers. You can just have a clickable element just like that, and that would work just fine. All right, so now underneath this, we're gonna have just a series of row-based cards. All right, so one thing I wanna do is take our background and we're gonna change it from white to slightly off-white, which is FB, FB, FB for the hex code. That will give us the ability to have white panels that just subtly appear or show up. There's not a, hardly any contrast, but it just gives you a nice aesthetic. And you could do the same idea um, in reverse. Now, I think I might wanna make this a little bit darker like that. Now we can see these completely white containers. Let's change these to eight, as this one up here was eight for the border radius as well. And let's just do um, a little quick design here for our activity feed. So you might have like little circle, circles that are just visual indicators based on their color of what type of activity it is. So maybe we'll use blue here and we'll replicate this, bring to front. Oops, don't wanna do that. 
And then we'll put in Brett zero one, some fictional username, liked your tweet. Okay, now what's the problem here with this type in relation to the rest of the type that's adjacent to it? Well, a lack of visual hierarchy. Um, this up here, the label demands more attention because it's informing the user of what this section's about. So we're gonna make this smaller. So we can scale this down and also put it at regular for the font weight. All right, and that looks pretty good right there. So now we can just go ahead and, oh, by the way, it might make sense to use an auto layout for this. And when you do that, make sure this is centered up and then we can scale this, just use left because we want it to stay to the left. There you go. And now we can duplicate this maybe just three times. We can change this fill here to another color and maybe this one to red. All right. So maybe this one says, shared your post. And then this one says, left a rude comment. That's why it has a red status uh, icon there. All right, we're just about done here. I think we'll have one more section. So this section, again, where do we place this? We wanna make sure we have equal white space from here to here compared to there and there. Um, and sometimes when you're moving it around, it may not show you right away where it's at or at all, like in relation to this distance right here. So what we can do is we can take this. Oh, the reason it's not showing, by the way, is because we've locked this. So now if we move this around, it might show us, but if not, uh, we can come over here. Let's ungroup this. There we go. So it was a part of a group, that's why it wasn't working. Now right here, we know that there's an equal distance of 33 between those elements. So we can group this back up now and hide it, or lock it rather. So we're gonna change this to add a post. And maybe this is these are some cards that allow a person to quickly add a post. At this point, just because we're already getting a little bit lengthy, I'm just gonna paste in something that I've had off screen. Um, what we can do here is I'm just gonna group these up and just put them in here. And there we go. Okay, so let's say we're happy with this. Uh, this is our design. And we wanna go ahead and make a dark mode version out of it. So let's replicate this. And the first thing we'll change is the background. So notice up here, it's almost white. We don't want almost black, so we're gonna come down right up around here. Now, obviously we're gonna have several issues with this, um, mainly because anything that's white or, or black currently rather, we cannot really see. So we're gonna change this, all this stuff to here to white. And the logo itself might need to have a, use a different shade to make it, or a tint a little bit more just to uh, add light to it. This element right here does not need to be changed at all. It's perfectly fine. Now notice that the, these here on the light mode, these are low contrast, but now they're high contrast over here. So what we can do is take all those, we'll go ahead and change this just to be a little bit lighter than the background it's sitting on. And under selection colors, we can make all the black text white. As you can see, it's a very simple process. We wanna do the same thing here as well. So we'll take the, uh, the black text, we'll make it white, and then we'll take this white stuff here and make it the same color as those panels. Now, do you have to do that? We could actually go the opposite direction. So we could change it to darker panels. And that, of course, is entirely up to you depending on I, uh, you know, how you like the aesthetic or not. I think I might wanna change the whole layout and make it a little bit lighter. That way these kind of contrast a little bit more. All right, so the final thing we wanna do is I wanna create a actual toggle switch up here that'll allow this right here to transition smoothly once you click the toggle icon and then also that it'll toggle over and animate automatically. So to do that, we can right click and go to Iconify and type in toggle. And we'll just choose one of these toggle elements. 
or actually rather, I realize a lot of these aren't structured the way you would think they are. So you know what? We're gonna make our own. So we're going to take the rectangle tool and we're gonna drag out just something roughly around this size. We can always adjust the shape layer, later rather. And we're gonna pull that all the way out so that it creates a pill shape. Next up, we're gonna make the background black here. And then we're going to use the ellipse tool, come out near the center and make this white. All right, get it positioned here so that if we duplicate it and we pull this over, we can now delete this and then we'll make a, um, a component variant where it's moved over. So make sure everything's lined up here and it does appear to be. And it would also make sense to bring out our ruler. So shift R, get a ruler here and also here. We'll take both of these and scale them down. And now everything's lined up quite well. You don't want it to be too close because you don't want people to click this by accident. All right, so shift R to get rid of that. Let me move this over. And now let's right click and we are going to create uh, a component. And then also we're going to add a, a variant. So let's move this off to the side. And for this variant, we're going to simply say, uh, we're gonna move this rather right over to here. All right, now when it's moved over, it's gonna be shifted to the dark mode so we won't be able to see it anymore. So we have to adjust these colors and essentially just invert them. So we'll take this background color here and we're gonna make this white. And then this one will be the same background color we have over here. So we can grab this and there we go. Now this is called just default. Um, we can just call this light and this will be dark. Now, another thing we want to do is we'll get these prototype up so that when this is clicked on tap, we're going to change to animation type of smart animate. And then we'll do the same thing going back. All right. So now we can come out to our assets and choose our component and get it positioned exactly where we wanted it to right around there. We'll copy this and then we'll paste this over here and then change to the design section and change this to dark. All right. So then finally, when we go back to prototype, we'll select this on click. This will go uh, navigate to smart animate and that should be it. So we'll run it back this way and let's go ahead and run this prototype. With any luck, it all will work smoothly and there we go. Look at that. All right, everybody, hopefully you found that useful. As always, check out designcourse.com and I'll see you real soon. Goodbye.